Okay, so I was looking at the syllabus and if you go through it, we have done the Excel thing. Um, we have done the base of his concept, OLTP concepts also completed. OLAP concept is left. So OLAP concept will combine it with uh, data warehousing concept once we are done with visualization. So four is pending. Fifth one, we have done it. Sixth, <clears throat> sixth also is pending. We haven't done indexes. Okay, so yeah, that and that will take not more time. Okay, um, so we'll do indexing and then we go to warehousing. Yeah. So indexing is uh, okay. A couple of days will take. So just to know, like even one day you can finish it. This is about to know what indexing is, how to create indexes. So <clears throat> we'll take SQL Server and we'll try to create index. <clears throat> In fact, when you create <clears throat> when you create a power uh, sorry uh, primary key right on a table index is automatically created okay and apart from that if you want to create some other uh, index on some other table that's when we use so rarely i mean not i shouldn't say rarely but uh, very few indexes we create apart from the primary key okay um, so when you're doing when you're doing search right on which columns you are doing more search right where when we write sql where right so we look at um, which all columns do we put more where? So by default, you will have, not by default, but the design is such a way that you will be doing more where on primary key, right? Where change this or, you know, update it, delete it, whatever, where employee ID is, ID is, right? So, so okay, 70 to 80% we work, we work on like on, on primary key. But there could be some other key, let's say in your, not key, but in your in your analysis, mostly you are doing let's on based on department, okay, or based on say job title, right? Based on some other column, any column, right? So in such cases, it's good idea to create one more index, okay, with that particular column. And the advantage of using index is I told you, it makes search faster. It's like this. If I tell you. Okay, fine. I give you a book. So the database resume is like a book. I give you search for this topic. Search for the uh, data where employee is, employee ID is 50. Now, employee ID is 50, okay? So you're looking for employee ID value 50 and you don't know in the book which page. So you'll have to go page by page, page by page, page by page, right? So if it is in first page, second page, you'll be able to answer it faster. But if it is in last page, okay, somewhere in the middle also, you will take long time to answer, right? So that's why when we say where, the, the where clause, the database should be able to quickly figure out, okay, this is the row we are talking about, quickly go update and come back and tell you, yes, work is done, right? So, uh, so it's not, uh, you know, it becomes very difficult. So they create indexes. So index is a, it's like another table, okay? Index is like another table where, you will have just two columns. One is the memory location. It's like page number. Okay, so just like page number. So every information will be in certain page. So every information that you put in database will go and st get stored somewhere in the memory, right? So it is like the memory location plus your second column is the ID. Okay, so automatically table is created with these two information. So when you say where ID equal to 50, first it will go and check in this table, the index table index we call it okay not we don't say index table index we go and check in the index okay okay for id 50 is described on page number 69 okay then quickly you go to 69 and search right so it'll give you okay 50 is in that memory location so you go there and you see that information and make the changes and come back so it is much faster than going through page by page right so it uses um binary tree concept but that's okay but this is this, what you need to know is this is how index makes search faster index makes search faster so now if you are reading okay in in our olap kind of application data warehousing kind of you keep reading so you need index indexes are important because we are reading right we'll have to read multiple from thousands and lakhs of so you read it's you know it's fine if you have a book okay you can go to any page any number of time but let's say if you're talking about the OLTP application where databases are there and getting updated every time. So now you have something in page 50, okay? And you write now, you know, it's like a notebook, okay? 
Now you insert something before. You can write anywhere in the notebook, isn't it? Now what was page 50 would turn out to be now page 55. Correct? It will turn out to be page 55 now. Because you added one extra. It's writing, right? So you keep writing to the database. You keep writing, deleting, updating. So the index that you would create would, would become non-functional now. Understand that, right? Because you keep editing, so the location, the content in the memory location will keep changing. If it keeps changing, you have page number 50 in the index. But what you have done, you have added few things, deleted few things. So the page number is no longer 50. It is now 55 or 45. So the index location changes in the, so you call the, we see that index has become invalid. Okay. So again, your performance will become slow. So that's why this databases when so, you, yeah. Uh, we can't change, uh, like if it changes, the index will also change accordingly. No, we can't is, do it like that. We can't do it like that. Point one is index is created at one time, right? So generally, let's say if you're writing a book, you finish writing the book and then you put the index, isn't it? You can't be spending time on creating the update now and then, right? So, so here we, it's not possible because again, you are making edits in the, you are already anyway making edits in the main table and now you're making edits in the indexes also. So it will again be extra work, right? And it's not feasible. So you don't know what will come, right? So how, would you, how do you make changes? So, okay. So what happens when you are, you keep using the database? after some time okay based on number of use if your database is heavily used then every day it happens okay or if your database is you know not that heavily used maybe once in a month it will happen that your indexes are no longer correct so we recreate the index okay we recreate the index so um, you know most of these applications okay they'll be uh, they'll uh, these are like automatically um, uh, set to trigger at midnight like let's say you know you're for an application whichever is the low downtime like whenever they are least used okay they will keep a time okay least used so mostly list used will be around midnight right so they will they, they call it as that's why we call nightly jobs we call them as nightly jobs or you know uh, these things so they'll write few scripts okay things which we think need to be redone one of the thing is recreating the index so the old index is dropped Okay, it's like drop table. So old index is drop, a new index is created based on the conditions that you give. So these are like you know, as I said, these are nightly jobs. You you do it once in a week, once in a day, right? If heavily used, you will do once in a day. So every night the indexes are recreated again. Okay, so yeah, so you have to manually do it, and you cannot do it on runtime on on the flow because of challenges, right? It's not possible. The second thing is. Again, it will change. So it's like, okay, you, I, I ask you to make one change in the notebook. You go and make one change. And since I have said you to make one change, you're going and changing the index. Again, I have to tell you again. You So the transaction time is getting double, right? So let's say if to make one change, if you take one second, now you're taking two seconds because you are making two places changes. So you are making the system slow anyway, correct? Right? So that's why, you know, we don't uh, often go and change, okay, uh, indexes. Once in a day, once in a week, we go and recreate all the indexes. It's like creating, deleting, the, removing the old one and recreating new one again. Make sense? So it says, uh, so, you know, um, that's the introduction. Yes, Swapnil, understood. Yeah. That's the indexes, introduction to indexes. We'll talk about types and, uh, adv so advantage is that, you know, makes search so very, very fast. for index also, we write code in SQL. Yes. Or uh, Python. Correct. Uh, no, SQL. We're talking about SQL. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. This mm -hmm. is like SQL. And uh, because it is, this is code database job. And generally the administrator, DBAs would do it. Okay. 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 Uh, but to use, um, we need to know uh, the which indexes are there. 
because when you are doing search, you are writing a query, it is always better to use the 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 columns on which indexes are created. And it ha happens sometimes, okay? It happens even now with our system being in use for of almost like 15, 20 years. Customer will come complaining that this query is not running fast. This is very slow. We go and see it because of the index. We create a new index and it starts working. So, so creating index is is intensive in the sense you know it takes time and because uh, you have to read through the entire um, um, see to create an index you have to read through the entire book right kind of you have to create through the entire database right. So it, it is not uh, something which is done quickly, right? For us, it'll be just one line, create index, that's all. But it takes long time for um, index to be created because it has to go through each content of the database. It's like, it's like visiting each page and making a note, right? So that when it's like, you know, in the exam time when you make a notes, right? So... So referring to the notes is easy because you know which page and which you have very short and all the information you have in the notes. But creating notes takes so much of time, isn't it? You have to go through each page, each content anyways. So it is intensive. Creating in the index is intensive, but yeah, it 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 drastically helps. You know, I have you know, first time when I was using it, I was amazed. Something that can take 20 minutes will take seconds. So, you know, it's so helpful. Okay, so of course, advantage, it has a lot more advantage than disadvantage. Disadvantage is that, you know, if it is not required, if it is, you, you don't just go and create index on all the columns. Okay, it is intensive. It is, it is computing, computer time intensive. And then when night jobs are being done, create, uh, let's say you fire at say midnight. So automatically this will be fired at midnight and it can take a couple of hours time to run. Now in those hours, okay, it's like somebody else has also connected your system is working, right? So the output, okay, and one thing is th these things are getting, uh, uh, you know, rerun. So if you try to log in at that point of time, <clears throat> you'll find system very slow, okay? And it can happen that let's say I have just deleted the index and I'm just about to create a new index. The moment I delete it, you log in and you're, you know, it's like uh, you're just trying to access the same table, right? So you will find it very slow. You know, you'll, it can take minutes. I mean, the system can very So because I just deleted the index and I, was, I want to create new one. So if you had waited for a couple of seconds, probably you would have got a different result. <laughs> but, you know, it just happened that, you know, tasks came in at the same time and you got stuck. Okay. And then uh, the other thing is uh, index is getting created. And then you log out and you log in and you do the same thing. It's super fast now. You know, just because, you know, you bad luck that, you know, your query got fired at the same time when index got deleted. Right. So, yes. So these things happen. So uh, it is, it is very fast. And uh, yeah. So it says analyze. Okay. So we'll monitor index and update. So update statistics is that's the one. Okay. That's where you, uh, you know, you you uh, update the statics. We'll we'll see that. So this is also part of our uh, performance tuning. So this is like backend DB activity. So we'll do that. Um, then we okay. So so apart from that, we were a W and we have done all the things hierarchies, um, grouping. We'll see joining tables. We have seen maps is pending. Slicing, as you said, is pending. And then towards the end, I'll show you dashboard. Dashboard means putting all these things together. Okay, so this is probably I need two more days. So we should be done. Uh, this we should be done in three, four days because some of the things we already know. So we'll only talk about the basic aspect of Power BI only. What is different? We Queries we have already covered. Sorry, plots have already covered. So we'll not focus on drawing plots. We'll focus on analyzing the, the you know, the thing. DAX functions. Yeah, that function just like see uh, uh, we yesterday we yesterday day before we wrote those um, uh, functions in Tableau right when we say create table dependent table and we wrote those queries right yes and the date one yes yes correct yeah, so the similar, same thing 
similar thing yes so similar okay. thing power bi okay, okay. so okay. power bi let's say you want to create a new table with filter or some condition so you want to uh, you know you want to create a new table where uh, uh, you know uh, based on some column you want to insert true or false right so exactly same thing so uh, okay so it's called dax in, in uh, it has a meaning we'll talk about it full form so those are functions in power bi so how to write your own dax dax function so you have separate function for average sum uh, if else things like that yeah so mini program kind of so yes so that will be the last topic under power bi and then uh, programming we have done so now it's about fundamentals of warehouse so what I'm love warehousing is what we'll do. Um, uh, okay, so we'll talk about what data. Did I do something? Yeah, we'll talk about what data warehousing is and what is the data lakes here. What is data mart? Okay, what is different stages areas? Uh, different uh, building blocks. Okay, so facts, fact tables, dimensions. Okay, and. Uh, we should be able to wrap up. So my target is next 10 days, I want to wrap up, okay? Uh, of course, if something is pending, we'll go beyond. Um, next, one more thing is, you know, um, from 21st, I'm, I'm going on vacation, okay? Uh, 28th, I'll be here, but from 21st till this entire week, I'm out. So if we can, if we can finish off by here, it'll be good for us. Is it okay if we take one more day on weekend? Let's say in the five days, can you do six days? Yeah, I'm fine, Sokhnil. Yes, Sokhnil. Okay. We also fine, right? Yeah. So if, yeah. Yeah, if you both are fine, and I think apart from you, I just see Anisha coming in. So if you three guys are okay, then, you know, we could uh, take extra day, okay? And, uh, uh, yeah, because if we don't finish by 28th, then we'll be able to meet only on 27th. So I don't want to do okay. that. I want to finish off here. So, yes. And and I think we are placed well. So one week, tab, this week, tab you, next week, Power BI, following week. Uh, warehouse, we are done. So, okay. So I think that, uh, you know, tab you and Power BI, you know, it's more of practice. I mean, when I start talking about it, I don't know, should I go click here? What should I do? You know, there are things in analyze, there are things in, uh, uh, when you do right click on, uh, things the, you'll get few, some options so you know so i keep jumping here and there just to show you that in when you do a project okay and that's why a couple of days back i took a new thing which generally you know uh, when you keep doing the trading right you you repeat same stuff again and again but i just want to create something new every time so that i also can find it little interesting you know so so yeah and um and one, and this is challenge I find with both Power BI and Tableau, especially when I'm doing training. Uh, I go and I take the latest version so that, you know, I also get to see what are the different versions and then options will be, you know, moved around some which will here will be removed somewhere else and things like that. So, so don't worry about those things. It's about practice. Okay. Um, and uh, truly speaking, speaking, if you sit for, uh, like one day, if you sit five, six hours, that's how you learn visualization, okay? You sit one day and you spend five, six hours continuously, try to build different things, try to, um, you know, I gave you the help link yesterday. That's 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 the, uh, when I get stuck, I go and see there. So you can go and see, okay, how is, because terms, you know, okay? You know, uh, you know, terms, like right? what is filtering, what is block, and then you just go figure out and you'll be able to do it, okay? So with that, okay. let's uh, start today's session. So, uh, yes, so I'm on the W here. I go to data, new data source. Uh, we'll go to Excel and data set, W sources. This is the one, okay. Let me get it down to it. But today we'll focus on HPI admins. Let's see how it works. Okay, so today I have a couple of topics to talk about. Okay, so okay, this is the HPI data admins. I'm not joining any table, so I'll say go to sheet. 
now you see here, okay, the metric you see, okay, so this is the area code, all these are fine. Uh, here, 12 meter change, average price, detached index, detached price, detached, okay, flight index, flight price, flat uh, change, okay, semi detached, terraced. Now you see, these are, um, if you see here, it's like it's a, it's a real set kind of data, okay. And they have data for different categories, right? So you have flat, uh, related, semi-detached, and detached. So now a terrace. Now see if you're trying to work with this data set, right? You will not be, probably, I'm just saying probably, you will not be <coughs> using all of them together, right? So if you talk about flats, you will talk just about flat, right? So yesterday, what we saw was we can hide the uh, the columns, right? Let's like say let's say I want to perform. So this sheet, I want to perform. I want to work with uh, flats data. So now there's so many data data uh, columns, right? You, you can go and say uh, hide, hide, right? You can hide. Now problem is okay if I say hide this, okay. Let's say I go and I hide. Uh, now I have a hide, uh, I have hidden uh, semi-detached, right? Now I go to sheet two and sheet two, I talk about semi-detached. Semi-detached. And let's say I want to talk about flats here. Okay. The problem with uh, this case is that in flat, okay, okay, it's fine. Okay, I detached. Okay, I remove the detached. So it's fine. I can get all the flight flat information but when you come to this semi detached the 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 one that we hidden is hidden for the entire workbook for the entire uh, this thing so even in this sheet also you won't be able to see right which is not a good idea correct so generally what we do is instead of uh, you know if you have too many columns okay and instead of um, um, okay instead of uh, have to move this around so instead of um, you know uh, okay so, so hidden uh, uh, okay so and then I go and say oops sorry uh, right see these are the columns that got so I'm going to say Unhide. Unhide. I think there's some a couple a couple of other columns also. Right? Yeah. Sales volume. And index here. So so instead of hiding them, okay, we create folders, okay. So we come to flat, okay. Let's say I come here and these are all detached, right? So I'll click on detached and I say, see folder is grayed out. Folder is grayed out because um, we haven't um, um, given the permission to uh, create. So now here also, if you go, you don't see um, the folder option, okay? So, um, uh, if you go here, okay, you see group by, now you see group by, it says data source table. So it is, that's why it's showing a US column. So I want to say group by folder now. So when I say group by folders, a folder name will appear here. And now when you click here, the folder option is, uh, is enabled and I say folder and I'll call it as detached let's say okay detached is created now I'll go and just keep dropping this detached pricing here okay detached in the detached pricing uh, detached change okay detached change right okay Similarly, you can create another folder. So I'll say semi-detached, okay? 
okay create folder submit it as now you go and you put them here okay yes so so advantage is that we are not hiding we are hiding but not hiding basically right so you are not hiding because if you hide it's it's beyond your control okay you can't control it and instead we're focusing on folder so okay if sheet one now see i can see all the indexes in one sheet otherwise it was going beyond the screen right very difficult to manage so always do that. You know, it's one time effort, right? One time effort to create these folders, but now it becomes easy to work with. Okay. So um, okay. So this is one option. Second option is uh, not, not second option. Second thing I want to talk about is that if you want to rename something, okay. So if you if you just go and say a rename. Now if you do rename. It is going to change the name in the data source also. Okay, so instead of renaming, uh, you know, for the entire thing, okay, so there's option called rename, right, which will change the name and it will reflect in data source also. Second option is you say alias, right? That's what one of the topic you saw was alias in our node. So alias is like something that you want to show it in this field itself. So okay, you go here and say right click and you don't see it here you'll see it here itself so that, that's the thing it okay so earlier it, you know you just right click on it and you'll get here um, uh, click change alias okay you can directly go and change alias so let me okay so for a second let let's hold on okay let me create some kind of uh, visualization and then we'll go and change the alias. Okay. So to create, you know, visualization, right? Um, you can select the, the columns, okay, that you want to use. So let's say I want to use uh, date and average price. Okay. So what is the average price per date? And also, um, this is something called region, region per region. Right. So if I say date, average price, it will show me average price per date. I also want to include regions. I want to say uh, average price per date per region, right? So I select a region also. Now, these are the three things I want to see. So when you don't know what relation to make, don't worry. You just select these values, okay? Once you select these values, go to show me, okay? Now you see. Some values are grayed out, some visualization are grayed out, and some are enabled. Grayed out means, you know, you cannot uh, perform grayed out things based on what you have selected. Why? So let's say if this is a text table, it says, for text table try one or more dimension, one or more measure, right? So it is only for one or more measure, one or more dimension. We have both dimension and measure, right? So you can select any graph, which is in it. Let's say we'll try to select this one. This is called packed bubbles. If you click on packed bubbles, okay. So here you see it has put all these here, okay. And now you see here the values have automatically been selected here, okay. So one option is that when you're drawing, when you're doing relation, right, the best thing is you let Tableau figure out what is right for you. Okay? You you let the Tableau figure out what is right, and then you start changing, okay. Start making changes. So you don't have to do it from scratch basically. So here, when I clicked here, uh, back bubbles, I got this, but I don't understand anything from here, isn't it? So maybe, you know, this may not be the right option. Let me go and click on this stacked bar. When I click on stacked Shatani, bar, yes. Shatani, how can Tableau figure out the things which we want? Yes. So, you know, that's the, uh, that's the thing, okay, Tableau, was very popular four or five years back and then it's lost its charm. Okay, four or five years back, okay. if you see Power BI and the other things that came up. Now, after that, okay. it added these inbuilt uh, things, which has again 
made tableau popular so last couple of years again it has become popular because of these things so see what it does is okay it's easy it's not very difficult now i, I have selected three different axes now if you talk about mm -hmm. histogram can you put three different things no histogram is done only on one data right only one data and yes. then you do count on it right so if i yes. select three different options then there's no possibilities of doing a histogram correct so based on how many measures you select and how many dimensions it select it you know it will rule out which graphs you know some graphs okay so which is easy to do right because uh, okay. you know based it's like based on ingredient you know what to cook right so if based on ingredient you know okay based on these things i can cook these five items right so when you plan for your lunch or dinner you see what what option you have okay based on that you decide isn't it same thing so I have, I have based on the data okay is it continuous numeric is it text data or number data that means dimension or number i know i can draw these graphs only so th yes. those graphs which needs more data than what you have selected or which needs less data than what you have selected so they have an upper uh, limit so then you will not get those options it only give you these options okay right so yes. that that's that's one uh, part here so now what i did i went and clicked on stacked bar you see it has given me very nice stacked bar okay and that also uh, you know it it knows okay so year and sum so see there are some uh, some uh, columns which are always put on x axis year year is one such column you will never see year on y axis year will always be on x axis which is always on your column so if you have a data set with year okay it by default it will put on this axis now instead of this if i had okay if i had selected this one then it would have been different right you would have seen um, year on y axis right so year is what we put base okay, right and then you had two option so in this case okay in this in this case uh, uh, bar graph is possible and let's say we created bar graph now when you create a bar graph how does it know okay i created a standing vertical bar graph so vertical bar graph will always be vertical as you see so vertical so you have two options region name year and sum now in these three in these three you see average or sum of average or whatever will change it later but the number is only one isn't it this is the only one that come on your rows your region name and columns cannot come on your rows yes or no because only this one has number right so now you have so what it has to think is should i put date or region here now if you put uh, if you put uh, region on the axis then you have so many dates right it becomes difficult to manage so obviously the one which are bigger in number should come on x axis which are smaller in number, right? Region could be what? I don't know. So here, if you see, three plus three, six regions are there, right? So six regions is easy to manage, isn't it? On, on, okay. Otherwise, what will happen is you will have, okay. So if I put region here and date here, you see, so many things, very difficult to manage. Agreed? So that's why, okay, it is smart. So just few logic, few things, few logic it uses. And it will create this graph for you, so it can easily predict, okay, okay, with some 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 conditions in it, some if else uh, in it, it can easily predict what will go on which axis. If I had selected the other one, this would have been different, obviously, right? You would have had numbers starting from I mean, years 1955, 1995 till 16 on on this axis, and you would have seen a horizontal bars, okay. So now when you come here, okay, you know that this is what you want, right? Now, obviously, if this is not what you want, you can go back and change the settings, right? So it, it you know, so in the starting from scratch, you you know, it, it gave you some data and now you want to analyze it. So I don't want to do sum and average. I want to do just the average. Okay, so I want to find average of average. Fine. Now this is your year. Now, if I go and right click here, okay, it can show me missing values. Okay, now if I go and say region also here, I want to put region also here. And let's say I put 
here somewhere like this. Okay, let's say I want to do that. Now, okay, so you have so many uh, uh, so many uh, departments or divisions, right? The regions, right? Regions. So I right click. Now you see this edit alias. Okay, so I'll go and I'd say I because I don't like the name here, so I'll go and I right click and say edit alias. Okay, and I can give whatever you want to put here. So like time and where. So if I say time and where, say okay, it got changed. So your your alias is now this is alias. This is not going to change the data in the database. Just the appearance is changed here. Okay, so this is how your alias can work. And if you go here, that's what I'm saying. Okay, it's not uh, okay. Describe or uh, let's see if I click outside. No, if I click, fine. Okay, um, it's not coming, but that's okay. I'll lose. Edit data source. Ah, yeah. you see this ed edit. So it's here. Edit aliases. You see. Okay. So you can actually edit the aliases here also. Major's name. Okay. So you can edit aliases here. So these are the aliases, and you can edit them directly here. So here region name. Right. This is where we have created. So if I click on region name, so you know, see this is what we added. Time and where. Right. And you see this star? Star means this is the alias that we have created. Okay. So, time and where has alias time and where. You can clear. If you don't want, say clear alias, all the aliases will go away. Okay. Or you say, I mean, you you know, you, you can change the alias here too by clicking here. Okay. So, here on the name, data source name, and edit aliases okay and you can pick which alias you want to do so here you know for example i have created this alias here right so now i see here the values of each region along with date uh, year right but let's say you know it's more like that i'm not interested in year right it's more like uh, uh, region and average okay now at the same time i want so this is about alias right i said and now let's say I want to have one more here. I want to have um, uh, average price, right? So I'll add one more average price. Okay, and this time I will do this. Uh, okay, let me put it here itself. Okay, so you got average price and uh, this is sum and this is average, right? One is sum, one is average. So. Okay. Uh, let's say I put year also here. Okay. So now you see all these graphs are multifaceted graph. Okay. So I go here and uh, okay. Um, okay. I create dual axis like yesterday. I did dual axis. So let me put them together. So it, it became together here, right? So you have this and uh, uh, let me put year here and region here for now. So, okay. So you have uh, a region which is in different color. You have average and sum both given here, isn't it? Now I'll just remove the show up. Now this is called your legends. Okay, so these are the legends, different colors, and your major name. Okay, so if you you can go and edit, of course, right? Okay, you can go and edit. So you have title. Okay, you have um, so you have to format legends. So click on format legends, and you can format the legend like font. Okay, alignment. Okay, if you want to add shading borders, you can do that. Okay, you want to 
uh, uh, sort, you can sort them, right? It's alphabetical order. So, okay, names would be sorted. Now, okay, you can hide this legend. You don't want it, hide the card. You don't want it, hide the card. Now, once you have hidden, to get it back, it might take some effort. In the sense, you know, it's, it's not like one single click. You have to go to Analysis tab here. Okay, now Analysis tab, you see Legends. So, go and say Legend. Okay, now Analysis tab again, go and say Legends. So, you, are, you get the Legends back. Okay, so so yes, so this is how you can um, can create alias. We can create folders. Okay, uh, you can play with legends. Okay, you can change the color of the legends. So if you double click here, it gives me option to select the palette. I I like uh, maybe say black color, dark to light or light to dark. 